Hey, and welcome to a really boring video about a really boring topic that might just be useful though. So what I want to talk about is uh, subsampling or supersampling and um, how it can, or just understanding it better can sort of help you make better choices when shooting with high frame, high frame rate cameras like RED cameras and some other cameras that do sensor cropping. Um, so I'm going to be throwing words like sensor cropping, supersampling, subsampling and, um, around and I'm going to hopefully demystify some of that or just fill in some of the gaps that you may or may not know. Um, so uh, one sort of misconception with cinematographers that I hear a lot is what's the point of shooting 4K if I'm only delivering in 1080p? What's the point of shooting 8K? And then someone will be like, oh, Red's just stupid. They're bringing out a 12K camera. What a waste. And it's actually not a waste. It's a really good idea. And um, the whole point of sort of recording more than you need um, it just results in a better final product, especially when your delivery medium is a lower resolution. Um, and for example, here we have a 1080p TV, and here we have a 2K image, or let's just pretend it's a 2K TV, 1080p TV, and as you can see, that little image fits nicely in there. Great. But it's very rare. I mean, even if you go back to film days, shooting with film, you don't record 2K. And if you think about it, 2K is literally two megapixels, I mean, that's pathetic. If you think about a cheap consumer stills camera these days, or any phone even, the lowest resolution you're gonna be able to take a photo with is eight megapixels, and we're buying TVs that are only two megapixels. <laughs> it's pretty pathetic when you think about the actual final resolution. So when you're shooting with film, um, you can scan that up to like 8K resolution, which is, I don't know, something like 20 megapixels or more. Uh, but the point is, um, digital sensors now are also allowing us to record much higher resolution. And my argument is that the higher you can record, the better. Um, obviously, you need to take into consideration media storage and media management and computer workflows and all that sort of crap. But let me just demonstrate what I mean, um, why it's important to oversample something. And then we're going to get into um, what cameras do, especially RED cameras, where they sort of sell this idea that, hey, we can shoot 300 frames per second, but I don't know if you've ever purchased a Red Scarlet X and thinking to yourself, sweet, I'm just going to record 2K because all my clients, you know, all they need is 2K and it can even shoot, you know, higher frame rates at 2K. That's a really bad idea on a RED camera. Even the modern RED cameras, what they're all doing is they're cropping the sensor, um, which results in a much lower quality image. And I'll just demonstrate that right now. So, for example, I've got this little um, green dot here in the corner of the 2K image. This little blue dot here in the corner of the 4K image and the little blue dot in the corner of the 8K image. So if I just turn these off and let's have a look at 4K for a second. So 4K is um, precisely four TVs big. So it's, you could say four times bigger than 1080p. So that's really good. So um, it's really, it's worth shooting 4K to deliver in 1080p and I'll show you why. Because what happens is when you record 4K, you bring it into your editing software and your editing software says, hey, are you delivering in 1080p? Sweet, well let me grab that 4K image for you and shrink it down to fit in a smaller space. And when that happens, it goes in here. <laughs> I told you this would be boring. And then you um, just put that in there. And you can see, sweet, so 2K and 4K are kind of the same. Well, no, have a look at the size of the text, it's smaller and have a look at the size of the pixel. It's actually four times smaller as well. And why is that good? Well, basically what you're doing is you're increasing the perceived resolution. We've got more detail in this 4K image than we have in this 2K image, even though they're both 2K once they're delivered. And you can see that here with the size of the pixel. So detail is refined and more crisp and things are just looking a hell of a lot better. And if we go to the 8K image, and you subsample that down. Look at this magnificence. Shrink that down. Press enter. Check out the size of that pixel and that. That is some beautiful resolution right there. And so the argument is that the more resolution you have, the better the final result will be. And um, there's other things that camera manufacturers sort of mention there. Like if you shoot 4K, and David Fincher does a lot of this in his films, you can actually, you don't have to resize it all the way down to 2k um, for the finished product you could just resize it down just a little bit and that allows you to um, pan and scan basically or or reframe 
Um, that's where you can you know crop things out later, or you can animate the zoom and actually zoom around in, in, in and outside of your image. And then imagine you had that ability with an 8K image as well. You have even more flexibility there. But where it gets sort of um, messy and, and yucky is that if you were to look at, on a 1080p screen, this 8K image, so imagine you just spent uh, a house deposit on this 8K camera from RED, and you bring that in, let's just uh, lower the opacity for a second, and you look at that at 100% crop. So you're just looking in the middle of the sensor. So you've recorded this beautiful wide landscape scene or someone's face, but really we're just delivering only this portion of the entire image. Well, what that means is that the size of the pixel is massive. It wasn't intended for this. And, and what that means is, imagine you had a noisy image or a slightly noisy image or not a lot of detail in your shot or a low contrast scene. What you're not doing is shrinking that noise to fit. You're just cropping it. Um, so that's what this would be doing, for example. So even though you recorded on an 8K state-of-the-art cinema camera, you've got this crappy, muddy, low-resolution, ugly image because you're only looking at a small portion of the sensor. Well, that's exactly what happens when you go into the menu settings and you're like, sweet, red, 8K. Um, this thing can shoot 600 frames per second. But what red don't sort of advertise, and it would be bad marketing if they did, is Oh guys, um, when we uh, record slow motion on our cameras, we're actually only recording this much of the sensor. Or the higher the frame rate, maybe only this much of the sensor. <laughs> um, and what that means is, is the same problem we just mentioned, is that you're actually looking at less pixels and the pixels are, are huge, basically. So if it's noisy in any way, um, that noise is gonna be pronounced on this final shot here. Um, so that's sort of um, a crash course on super sampling or sub sampling and why it's important to record higher resolution than you need to deliver in and the whole point of 8k is to deliver in 4k so that way you're at least sub sampling um, half so you're shrinking that down to to fit a 4k screen now and that's going to look really nice and then when 8k monitors become available red of course will have 16k camera and the same sort of benefits will apply so hopefully that's cleared some stuff up and um, if you're ever sort of frustrated with the quality of the slow motion recording that you have, that's the reason um, and it's just something to be aware of. So not all cameras do that. Um, the Sony F55 for example will do a 2K slow motion 240 frames per second but it will record that slow mo using the whole sensor and it will subsample it down and actually record 240 frames per second. So that's very different to uh, what RED do which is just crop the center out of it. Okay, so the whole reason I um, wanted to do this little video is because I got a, um, an email from someone who's just asking me about um, some issues he's having with chromatic aberrations and he sent me a couple of images. And I was like, oh yeah, I was about to reply without even looking at the images and I'm like, whoa, that looks awful. So chromatic aberrations um, are basically a lens distortion or light distortion problem that happens in lenses and it's a natural physical phenomenon and basically you can go to Wikipedia and have a look and read about exactly what's happening. You can see the light rays coming in here and they get diffracted and whatever it's called. <laughs> and um, what can happen, especially with uh, wider apertures, is um, you can see what's called fringing. Actually, technically it's not called fringing, that's another problem. Um, but you can see these purple artifacts here in high resolution, uh, sorry, high contrast scenes. Um, you can see it here with a, a high end camera and a high quality lens and you can see it in um, this guy's example who sent me. But look how awful it particularly looks here. Like there's these blotchy chunks of purple and dark black spots. I mean, that looks, that looks awful. That looks like there's a problem with the camera. Um, if you have a look at this example here, yeah, you can see chromatic aberration, but it's not awful. It's not, um, it doesn't look like there's something wrong with the camera. So this is kind of normal. If you're shooting, say, at f2 on a 35mm lens that didn't cost you $50,000 and you got a high contrast scene, you're going to get chromatic aberrations. Um, and I will be showing you how to fix that just in a second. But when I saw these images, I was like, holy shit, that looks really bad. Um, and my um, analysis is that I'm thinking that the, um, the operator shot this in slow motion, uh, which they let me know that they did, 
and I'm imagining that the camera is actually being cropped to shoot that slow motion because, I mean, just forget about the chromatic, chromatic aberrations for a second. Just look how gross this image looks. It's really muddy. The detail in that tree is really mushy. It just looks really, really bad. I mean, I know it's shot log as well, but that doesn't look like a quality professional camera to me. That looks like a hideous, mushy mess. And that's exactly um, the result I'm talking about when sensors get cropped rather than super sampled. So to top it off, it could be an issue with shooting S-Log into a Shogun with a crop sensor that may be underexposed slightly, um, but it does look pretty bad, it, I must say, it does look pretty bad. Uh, I mean, like I said, something like this looks bad, but it just looks kind of normal. In any case, how do we fix something like this, whether it's um, dodgy as like that, or, or whether it's like this? Well, there's um, a really, really easy way to fix it in Photoshop. Um, and I'll just show you that now. Because, you know, it's a common problem. It's not, it's not a, a new thing. Chromatic aberration is just uh, normal. Where the hell is this shot? Um, but Photoshop now lets you use the camera raw filter, even if the image isn't raw. So if you open the file in Photoshop, file, camera raw filter, and then you go over to the lens correction settings, and check it out. There's a setting here that says purple amount, and you just slide that across, and bang, it's gone. Pretty cool. And you can see there are other um, chromatic aberrations here, which is the green amount. Um, this is where you've got to be careful, though, because the leaves are also green. So uh, maybe this amount, it looks more like a tealy green. You can try and get rid of it like that. Um, so these slides are pretty aggressive. You've just got to be careful with them. But I mean, that's looking a hell of a lot better. You can see the before and after there. So what about video? How would you go about doing that in video? It's not as simple as Photoshop, but it's pretty simple. Um, what we're going to do is just create a new node. So I've just done Alt S to create a new node. And then we're going to choose our qualifier and use the eyedropper. And if we just zoom in here and have a look at this chromatic aberration, which is clearly purpley, uh, we can just click on some of that purple and press Shift H. That's going to show us what we're actually selecting. And then we could just go down to the saturation and just lower the saturation of that purple. And you'll notice we haven't really got rid of it all. And that just means we need to refine our key a little bit, have a look at more shades of purple and blue, maybe increase the saturation limit that it's looking at. Um, and there you go, now we've completely gotten rid of the chromatic aberration. But now, um, you just got to be careful, because what have I done in my selection? I've actually selected shades of blue as well. And that's because there are shades of blue in the chromatic aberration. And look how cool it looks, like it's completely gone. But just like we saw in Photoshop, if you're too aggressive, we've actually started to eat into his shirt as well. So we've desaturated his shirt. Uh, so that would be a matter of just maybe backing off the saturation levels a little bit, refining your key a little bit, or worst case scenario, actually creating a garbage man around this guy. But anyway, so that's, the, um, that's all I wanted to make the video about. I hope you're having a great Friday, and um, yeah, talk to you soon. No, I won't. I'll see you soon. Probably not even. I'll think about